If you're a podcast host, there's a really good chance you've gotten approached by people that want to be on your show that really miss the mark. If you're a featured expert who's looked for opportunities, there's probably a good chance at times you've made huge mistakes. Well, in this episode of Vegan Visibility Podcast Show, I'm going to share with you what not to do when you're trying to get on a show and what to do once you are on a show. So stick around. Welcome to the Vegan Visibility Podcast Show, where your host, Kathleen Gage, shines the spotlight on vegan and plant-based businesses and entrepreneurs from all walks of life committed to cruelty-free eating, healthy lifestyles, animal compassion, and the environment. Enjoy the show. Well, I am excited today because today I finally got online. Something happened where no matter what I was doing, I couldn't get online. Number one rule of getting on podcast shows is show up on time. But sometimes even with our best laid intentions, things don't work out the way that we had intended. So with that in mind, don't worry about things. Don't worry if you don't uh, get on a a show at the planned time if technology isn't working, because more and more every day, things are not working out for people. And what we're going to talk about today, which by the way, my name is Kathleen Gage. I'm the podcast host of two shows. One is called Vegan Visibility. The other one is Plant-Based Eating for Health. And I have very specific criteria of what I look for in the guests that I bring on to my show. We're going to talk about the mistakes that people make when they approach not only me, but other hosts. And um, hopefully this will avoid you getting rejected over and over and over again. I actually have had clients I've worked with that until they found out what the secret sauce was, the formula was, they tried and tried and tried and kept getting rejected. And there's very simple strategies that really are more common sense than anything. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that the show that you're approaching is the right fit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over to iTunes and I'm going to, this is the first time on a live I'm actually doing this, but uh, I'm, I want to show you how to search out shows. First of all, go to iTunes and or Apple podcast. And when you go to the search bar up in the upper right hand corner, you can put what you're looking for. In this case, I put vegan business. Uh, My good friend Katrina Fox is in the number one position. Uh, We've got quite a few people I know that are scattered throughout that have great position. And it changes from time to time because on occasions I've been in the number two position, the number three position, the number five position. And for some reason right now, my show is about the 20th position. With that being said, what you want to do is you want to go to the description of the show and you want to read the description. And let me go ahead and put my glasses back on for this one. Vegan Visibility Podcast shines the spotlight on ethical, sustainable, and cruelty-free lifestyles and businesses. Only those. Now, this is the important key for my show. This isn't the guideline for everybody, but this is the important key for my show. Only those who are 100% animal and dairy-free in their food consumption are invited on the show. I cannot begin to tell you the number of times that I've had people that um, have approached me that I ask them that one simple question. They send me a boatload of information. It obviously is a template they're using and they're just kind of throwing mud at the wall. And I just send it back and I say, are you 100% void of animal and dairy? And the answer that usually comes back is, well, almost. I eat fish, so I'm a pescatarian or I eat cheese. And that doesn't qualify for my particular show. So the number one thing you want to do is search on the shows that fit your genre. So you have to know who's the end user, who's the listener or the viewer, and then do some research on the show. I have a good friend, Bonnie Frank, who always flies solo on her show. What that simply means is that she is the only one who's on the show. She doesn't invite guests on. And she she said, inevitably, every single day, she gets a message from somebody saying, I love your show, been listening for a long time, I'd be a great fit for your show. And the reality is, is if they'd been listening for a long time, they would know that she doesn't have people on her show as guests. That's just the way that she has positioned her show. It's worked very good for her for very, very well. So the number one thing is don't approach a host if you're not a fit for them. 
The other thing, the mistake that people make, this is what not to do, is just approach a host without doing any research at all, without listening to any episodes. Another thing is not having your information prepared. So let me show you what I mean on that. We're going to go to share the screen again. And one thing you can have is what's called a one sheet. This happens to be two pages of information. I've really drilled it down to be a lot simpler, but this is something that I used for quite a while. And what you'll notice is here's a little bit about me, a couple of topics I speak on about Kathleen Gage, links over to my own podcast shows, then a few organizations I've worked with. This is more of my speaking uh, one sheet rave reviews, and then more about me and then my social handles. So that's something that you definitely want to put together, but you can do it on one page. One page works quite nicely. Another thing you want to do is you want to have a short introduction and a bio in a Word document. I'm speaking this weekend on the um, Climate Healers Conference, and my presentation is all about how to increase your online reach exponentially. And I've got a short introduction that I have provided to the producer because I want them to be able to introduce me according to what is most important. So this is my short introduction, three short paragraphs, and then my bio. What many people do is they send their bio without a short introduction and then the host might read the whole darn thing and you're like, okay, 10 minutes later, you're getting into your presentation. Your introduction should be no more than 20, 30, 45 seconds. So 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 45, somewhere in there is about the right amount of time. When you get booked for a show, find out exactly what the host wants. And usually the host is going to tell you. So this is another mistake people make. They don't pay attention to what the host wants. And so you want to know what the host wants and you want to get it to them as quickly as possible. Something else you want to have is a high resolution photo, whatever it is that you use in your promotions. I want to remind you that this is Kathleen Gage with Vegan Visibility Podcast Show and Plant-Based Eating for Health Podcast Show. If you're somebody who's curious about plant-based eating, the Plant-Based Eating for Health Podcast Show would be a perfect fit for you because I interview people who have literally turned their lives around. Uh, one gentleman, he lost something like 275 pounds through a plant-based diet. Another gentleman lost about 145 pounds. Other people have gained weight as a result of going plant-based because they needed to. Um, it, some uh, have reversed diseases. So plant-based eating for health, that's the kind of the um, genre and theme and niche for that particular show. Vegan Visibility, on the other hand, is a show that targets those who have either vegan, plant-based or sustainable businesses, and they want to get visibility and they want to share what their marketing strategies are, what their business building strategies are, what their sales strategies are. But again, they have to be 100% void of animal and dairy. Or they are reaching a market who's interested in veganism, interested in growing a vegan business, interested in marketing strategies within that uh, kind of that uh, barrel and, or that bucket. Um, so I encourage you go to Apple podcasts, go to Amazon podcasts, go to Google podcasts, go to Spotify, check out any of the most popular audio platforms and you'll find my podcast show. You can also go to YouTube because I often put a video up of the episode, uh, where I've interviewed the uh, featured expert. Kristen Collins is the last expert that I interviewed and she wrote a book, her Phoenix rising phenomenal book, phenomenal interview. Um, she was very prepared. I actually complimented her on her assistant, how she approached me. The first thing she mentioned, now keep in mind, again, this is only for my shows, uh, my criteria. Each show has a different criteria. But her assistant approached me and said, I see that you look for people who are 100% void of animal and dairy, and they are vegan. And she said, Kristen Collins is, she is, and she gave me a nice synopsis of who this woman is. And she got through the biggest gatekeeper, which is me. So I encourage you really look at what you're doing. And um, as a guest, uh, I'll go deeper into this on another episode, but a few things you want to look at as a guest is you want to promote the episode that you were on for the host. There's a couple of reasons for that because it's really nice to do. We as hosts put a lot of effort into our shows and 
we really appreciate it when a guest puts that information out to their market. Um, another thing is the more that you promote, promote, the more likely it is that the host is going to ask you back or they're going to tell their colleagues and their friends who have shows about you, who was a rock star, a superstar, and you really went out of your way. Um, a great example of somebody who did that recently on my show is London Todd, Todd Sinclair, and he's known as the Rebel Vegan. He did a phenomenal job of just keeping putting out information about the show he was on. He put artwork, he put snippets, he posted in Facebook, on LinkedIn, I mean, Twitter, everywhere. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And it really makes me appreciate him as an expert, him as a guest. And what's interesting is he, I didn't know that he had never been on a show before because that's not my criteria. I don't care if you're brand new. If your message aligns with my market, if you follow the guidelines, I want you on the show. My messaging to my market is the whole vegan lifestyle, both in a personal way and a professional way. And after the fact, he actually posted in Facebook, he said, my first ever podcast interview, I was blown away. He did not act like a beginner. He did not uh, act like somebody who had never been on a show. He sent me the information I needed. He provided a copy of his, uh, uh, the Kindle version of his book, um, Christian. She provided me a physical copy, a signed copy. And that's something else that you don't want to not do. Um, sometimes I've had people who say, well, it costs money to send a book to a host. Marketing costs money. Podcast shows are all about marketing. So I encourage you really look at what you're providing to the host, can they do a great interview as a result of it? Or are you limiting their ability to really shine the spotlight on you? If you're unsure of um, what you need to do, my recommendation is get my resource. It's the Influencer's Guide to Podcast Appearances, how to really amplify your visibility. And all you need to do is go to powerupforprofits.com powerupforprofits.com forward slash checklist. That's powerupforprofits.com forward slash checklist. Now that link's only going to be available for a few days more. We're actually switching everything over. We're in the middle of making a huge, huge, huge change on uh, my website, on my URLs, on all of that. So I would inc invite you to go ahead and get that right away. But um, when you promote episodes, you can promote the uh, artwork, you can promote the whole episode. You can promote if it's on YouTube, the YouTube link. You can promote the audio link um, and ask the host for what you need. Say, do you have something that you can send me so I can promote it? Uh, most hosts will provide you with that kind of information. But again, I really encourage you to look at the opportunities that podcast interviews offer you. Uh, I think about this conference that I'm speaking at this weekend. It started with a small podcast show I was on. Now, I've been doing podcast interviews for a lot of years, and I'll go on small shows if it's aligned with the message I'm trying to get out, mark, out to market. I won't go on big shows if it's not aligned. There's no point. It's really making sure you know what your messaging is, you know what your mission is, you know what your movement is, and staying aligned with that. And I've had people who are brand new to this whole podcasting thing who want to get on shows and they go, I want to get on the big, big, big shows. And it's like the big, big, big shows may not serve you. One is you may not be ready emotionally or professionally to get on the big, 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 big shows. And I'm talking in the plant-based world, that would be the Rich Roll type show. It would be the Chuck Carroll type show. It would be the Dr. Furman type show. Those are huge, huge, huge names in the industry. And with a lot of people, they're just not ready for that. So you want to grow into it. It's just like getting media. A lot of people, they want to jump right into the New York Times, USA Today, a Wall Street Journal, whatever it may be. I'm just using those as examples and they've done nothing in their local market. Start small and grow into it. It doesn't mean you have to be small. It means that you just grow into the opportunities. And what's interesting is with this small show I was on, I mean, it was a little, little tiny show, brand new show, little show. Well, that opened up an opportunity to be on another podcast show. That opened up an opportunity to interview somebody who knew the founder of Climate Healers. She asked me, that was Paige Parsons uh, Roche. She asked me, would you like to have him on uh, your show? 
Dr. Raylish, would you like him to be on your show? And it's like, absolutely, I would love that. And so I brought him on the show. And then he and I had such a great connection. He said, would you be a speaker at the uh, World Healers Convergence Conference? And that was about three months ago. Absolutely. And that opened up other opportunities that opened up other opportunities that opened up other opportunities. You never know where your opportunity resides. Get out of your head, get into your heart, get into what your message is, what your mission is, what your movement is, and just go for it. Show up every single day, do what you need to do. I've been doing Facebook lives now since the beginning of the year. So we're at probably about 20 that I've done. The first one was kind of rough. I didn't know what I was doing. I thought, okay, I finally have to kind of jump in the deep end and do it. And I have gotten pretty skilled at doing it. But like today, I couldn't get on to save my life. It took me about 20 minutes before everything hooked up. I have no idea what's going on. Apparently, Zoom is having some problems. And Pretty soon, I'm going to be switching to a different service provider that feeds out my episodes when I go live. It feeds them out to several platforms at once, including LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. And so I do one episode and I get four or five times the uh, result due to the software that I'll be using or the service provider that I'll be using. So stick around for other episodes. I'm going to be Uh, publishing a schedule of when I go live, I'm going to start bringing guests on where we have conversations and uh, people can enjoy insights into, for example, a book publisher. I'm bringing uh, Matali on, who is a book publisher. She's with Let's Tell Your Story. Uh, Katrina Fox is going to be coming on. Um, I, I have a number of people who have agreed to come on my Facebook Lives, my clubhouse. I'm going to be amplifying that because this is the year where you have to quit playing small. This is the year where you get your message out in a big way. This is Kathleen Gage with Vegan Visibility encouraging you. Check out my influencer's guide. Go to powerupforprofits.com forward slash checklist. That's powerupforprofits.com forward slash checklist. And it's absolutely free. You leave your name and email address, the the usual. And you get this really great resource. I will send you other valuable information, updates. I'll let you know what I'm doing. And of course, there will be opportunities for you to consider working one-on-one with me. I wish you a great day. I wish you much success in what you're doing. And I really encourage you do your homework before you ever approach a host, because when you do, you get a much greater result. Have a fantastic day. And this is going to be an episode on my podcast show. That's another thing that I've been doing is taking my lives and some of the episodes I will put up as a podcast episode. This one is going on vegan visibility. So go to Apple podcast, check out vegan visibility podcast show. If you want the marketing strategies, check out plant-based eating for health. If you want to know about health and nutrition, have a great day. You've been listening to the vegan visibility podcast show. Be sure to subscribe to get notified when the next episode is live. And we always appreciate reviews. Join us next time for more inspiration, education, and motivation to build your business one cruelty-free and healthy person at a time.